Alrighty, this is a quick video intro to our new Headway um, Lithium Traction Pack. I've been just doing some initial tests on it here just to see how the cells fit. So what we have are a series of four of these uh, plates here. They're um, so a total of... Uh, Four, um, four high and twelve uh, deep. Each of the holes are forty on mil. And uh, you can see I have a bit better there. I've just been trial fitting some of the some of the cells here to it while I'm uh, oh, waiting for. Uh, the last couple of parts to turn up. Um, there will be four series cells across the pack and uh, basically the only components that I'm still held up on are a series of spacers that will go in between the uh, plastic plates to keep them 200 mil apart. That's the spacing that I've decided up upon and um, each of the points where we have four cells here each of the points we have four cells in a row where they're actually going to join up to um, each series cell which will be pushed through through here and will uh, join on here we're going to have a copper plate here Got a whole box of copper plates. What the type do we be using here? Uh, I can find one of them in here now. Here we go. This is the plate uh, that will go in between each series string here. As we can see, that will effectively parallel up um, each of the each of the cell blocks, which would be 3.2 volts, uh, 64 amperes. That's what each block will be. This particular plate here is made out of uh, 1.5 mil um, copper, and uh, as you can see, we got four got four six mil holes in it here. We got a small tab with a three mil hole that'll be for monitoring the uh, cells. So each each uh, each central join up point will have a bar such as this one sitting in between the cells so that's will give us um, strings across the way of uh, 12 volts 64 amp hours and then at each end of that string we've got, we've got a different type of a, a plate. This is a, a bigger plate. Again it's one and a half mil um, copper but I have I have enough to do uh, potentially I don't know if you see a little bit better there. I have enough to do uh, two of them um, in a kind of a parallel setup to give me the effectiveness of a three mil, three mil area. So you can have two plates like this. So that's the equivalent of having three mil copper, which uh, should be enough. This is a small pack. Um, so at each end, then we have a, we have four cells. We shall we say. Uh, sticking out here and four cells here. That plate will go on like so and join up the four ends and then put them in 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 series also. So that's the plan for that um, for the ends of the pack. So that'll go together and give us um, uh, what is it 144 volts 
at 64 amp hours which is a little about 9.6 kilowatt hours I think and then we have two of these bus bars here which are made out of 6 mil copper see it's a lot thicker there we have again 6 mil holes here for the cells and we have an 8 mil hole here and I've got two of these, one will be the final positive and the and, um, uh, 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 negative. So if this is the pack here, we'll have the four cells like that and this guy will be just kind of hanging on there to give us our... Uh, we'll have one here and one down the very end there to give us our final terminals. So that's the bus bars and the cells obviously, obviously uh, these are headway 16 amp hour uh, lithium iron phosphate cells um, they have a continuous discharge I think of 10C which is, which is 160 amps and a peak discharge of uh, 240 amps I think and I have actually pushed them harder than that. I've spent a spent about six months uh, or so, basically um, examining lithium cells, going through the various options in terms of price, availability, capacity, um, and this pack here. It's not ideal for range. Um, in fact, it'll be about the same as the 12 kilowatt hour lead acid pack, but the big difference being that whereas the lead acid pack comes in at 340 kilos, uh, this pack will come in at approximately, I think it's around 80 to 82 kilos when all of the ancillaries, the copper bars and, uh, all that kind of thing are uh, fitted to it so there's a huge saving in weight and uh, also we go from a battery pack that would probably be able to handle oh, maybe 500 cycles to 50 percent depth of, of, of discharge up to a pack that can handle about 2,000 um, uh, 2000 cycles uh, to about 80% depth of discharge so there's a there's a big difference here both in weight and in cycle ability now <clears throat> when the spacers go in here it'll be 200 mil between each of the black plastic guys here when when they go in we'll have we'll have a treaded bar that will push through the entire uh, pack, 10 mil threaded bar here. Just uh, thread that guy through. It'll be something like that. Uh, threaded, threaded bar. We have a choice of we have a choice of different sizes of M6 grub screws uh, which will be for joining up the uh, I just dropped one there now to be for joining up the uh, the cell sticks uh, I've got the shorter ones installed on some of these cells here when I was just doing some experiments so as you can see that one's a little bit short for when the copper uh, bus bar goes on there uh, so we'll be going up to the that's a 12 mil one you see there, so we'll be going up to the 16 mil, that guy there. And the procedure is um, for joining these cells is that you tighten the grub screw into the negative end of the cell, such as this here. You don't ever tighten it into the positive end because in there there's a pressure disc. Um, that if the cell has an abnormal condition uh, it basically pops open and vents gases now if you put a long bolt in there 
that's going to push down against that disc and this can't pop and you and you get yourself a pretty a pretty effective stick of of, of dynamite right, so that's not a good condition at all so as I say we'll be going with the a bit of extra light there there we go we'll be going with the uh, grub screw going into the negative end which is basically um, a, that's essentially a, a blind hole which I'll be able to show you here now so if we, if we look in there we'll just see that that's, that's just a that's just a blind hole M6 tapped there's no pressure uh, disc in there so we can take a 16 mil grub screw and we can uh, thread the little guy in there hopefully I'm trying to do this single handed here there we go and when he sits in like that we got quite a bit of thread we've got about maybe six mil of thread so when I take one of my intermediate bus bars I'm gonna see if he'll fit on there so that as you can see there it takes up quite a bit of that thread now I'm gonna just take the paper off this and I'll show you a cell join so just hold on a second okay so we'll just go ahead and uh, and see we got our copper bar here of taking off the paper from it and uh, it's pretty clean on this side but uh, I'll need to probably give a little bit of a I'll I probably have to clean them up before I fit them to the pack, just with a bit of steel wool, just to take off any of that kind of, kind of uh, dross that's on the far side. So basically, we slot our uh, slot our um, grub screw through the hole there. Then we'll be taking the adjoining cell for that. Let me just see if I can. Uh, Let's see if I can get a cell handy here for you. And uh, wouldn't make a very good TV chef because I didn't have it all prepared earlier. Here we go. So, let's see now. So here's the positive end going on here now. You can see it's just going to screw on to that uh, piece of threaded grub screw that sticks out. And there we go, there's our cell join effectively. So if we look at that, um, for a bit of extra light, there we go. So that's how the, that's how the cells are going to join up essentially. As you see it'll be four, it'll be stacked four high there, so these will be the intermediate bus bars. So that's my plan for joining up the sticks. And then, uh, as I said, the bigger bus bars here will go on the ends to, to complete the pack. So, once we have that done, um, we'll be putting these uh, M6 Nord locks onto the uh, end plates. Where you'll have a bolt uh, going on to these, to these guys again, just to, where they're set up, there'll be bolts going in here, so we'll have some of these Nord locks going on there to stop them coming off. Got some M10 plus to the threaded bar and a few other odds and sods. And of course, you need a lot of cells. Uh, in this case, there'll be a total of 180 cells to this pack. Um, so, as I say, just a quick little intro to the design um, setup here, and we will come back hopefully in the next couple of days when I start putting the pack together. And we have our uh, spacer, spacer tubes in, we can actually start um, assembly. Okay, that's it for now. One final aspect to this, and that is. Uh, how do we go about fitting 
the cells through these holes because they're quite a precision fit. Now at the minute the air temperature here is about zero degrees C so you would actually find it quite difficult um, to fit a cell. I'm just going to take a, a I'm going to take a dead cell that I have here just to do uh, demonstrate this. It will be quite difficult uh, to get it to fit through that hole easily. Um, so it would fit, but it would require quite a bit of mechanical effort. So what we're going to do, and what I'll have to do while we get this cold spell, we take ourselves a heat gun. Now we're going to heat gun the hell out of the uh, area here that we're interested in. We'll be heat gunning the whole area that we're putting in the cells. So I'm just going to basically get as much heat into this area as I can here. Should actually find that that's brought up the temperature a decent bit, probably not enough, but uh, it's enough that the cell will actually start to go through there. I should have set up the tripod here. I'll try and uh, try and get a better shot on it. There we go. Should be able to see that. Okay, hopefully. So we need a bit of good old-fashioned heat on here. Hands while I'm at it. It is quite cold. There we go. As you see, the little bit of plastic there now is starting to blow, or sorry, starting to uh, soften. So take my trusty uh, dead cell here. We now see that it'll go in there with very little effort at all. So it's just basically screwing in through the plate coming to the place you need it to be and stopping. It's not uh, it's not a difficult task but the cold air doesn't really help it at the minute. Um, just needs a little bit of heat to just put a tiny bit of swell and soften into the plastic and then, uh, then it works perfectly. Um, so that was the, just a little concern a few people had just about fitting the cells. That's it for now.